Rosanna, it's so thrilling to get to talk to someone who works in conservation because I guess you've got this forensic knowledge of these paintings. You've seen these Rembrandts really up close and personal and there's just so much detail in it. This is a kind of a symphony of lace, this painting of Agatha. It's beautiful. She's a very still painting and I think she forces us into a sort of still sort of reverie in front of her. But she can be explained, if you see what I mean. Yeah, so for me, she's magic, but you probably know the, the alchemy that Rembrandt's using. I mean, how does he get the lace to look like that? It feels real. It feels as if it's almost been collaged on. Well, he works from beneath. He knows from the beginning this is going to be quite a monochromatic painting, so he starts with his ground layer. He goes for a light grey. So actually, for something that looks very white, when you get up close, which you, is a real privilege that you can do in this exhibition, you, you come to see that actually there's lots of colours in that. He is playing an incredible optical game with your brain as mm, well. Yeah. In the scalloped edges of the lace, mm. the bit that's lying over black, he paints in grey. In the layer above, which is white linen on white linen, He's painted in a completely different palette. That's a lot of work to create for yourself. Yeah. I mean, he could have yeah. put her in a simpler yeah. garb. And this painting is extraordinary in the way he's using different palettes across it, which tells us he's really focusing on every single bit of it. So that lace, he will have been working on that and that alone. And he will have had his blacks and his whites and his ochres and umbers. So it will have been a very restrained palette, mm. but an incredible effect. It's as if she's coming out of the frame. And in fact, when a fan yes. comes into our space, her thumb goes over the frame edge. It's a really modern yes. idea. It's actually almost spooky sometimes, I think about it. And imagine the lighting she would have been in. It might have been a much more subdued, but a much more random light, maybe candles. That spookiness would have been even more pronounced, I think. Yeah. I'll get my Optivisors. Optivisors, is this sort of optimum visuals? Absolutely. Oh, wow. Plus oh, the light <gasps> always helps. If you get them comfortable on the back of your head, yep. we can look at his pearls okay. to see how he sculpts the light. Oh, my goodness. This is insane. <laughs> wow, it's so amazing. You can see every... It's like a different painting, like every bump. Take a look in the pearls. This part of the painting, from her, her linen cuff, is the part that's in our world. Yes. And has, in sort of weighable terms, most of the paint that is in the painting in it. I mean, there's this so, really rough shadow that he's done in this kind of, like, red tone, which he, he just... That is the underlayer, because he wants to make it as real as he wants us to believe. Yeah. He paints really intense colours. A strong red glaze lies under the pearls. Yeah. But not only that, he gives it coloured highlights. Four very specifically placed apricot highlights. And then <gasps> the fan itself yeah, is, this is... This is abstraction. It looks like a... <laughs> it just looks like a contemporary work of abstract painting. It's unbelievable. Yes. It's as you're right. Lead tin yellow, alizarin crimson. It's kind of sculptural. I mean, it, it looks is. thick, it's and in pesto. He, he pulls it out because he knows that that is what's going to catch the light. Mm. There are parts of the painting he doesn't ornament. For mm. example, this quite bold yeah. pink line, just yeah. saying, right, that's the chin. That's where she finishes mm. 